concepts that they were fed with whatever religion it was are now going to be released to be free. And we're, this is a great awakening and a great freeing for the whole universe. It's bringing balance back. Well, these, which is why, which is why I implore people to to switch from, uh, you know, tearing down the temple and what's wrong with the world to switching to there's a lot of things that need to be prepared for what happens next. Yeah? I agree. You know, you, your cave is not designed to tear it down. Your cave is the new temple. It's about what happens after the, the they run out of town. What happens after the illusion is broken? What happens after people wake up? And, you know, people have to get on and, and live life. And they're the codes of law. They're the covenants. They're the money system. And, boy, it's taking a long time, but it's the whole thing. Yeah. So, you know, I hope people will chip in and and uh, get involved and, this you know, not just learn, but, you know, think about how things can be better and get involved in these, finishing these codes and get involved in, you know, I've had people who have offered their IT services and I've said, great, come on board, tell us what you can do. And then the, the line goes dead. And I, I know that the argument can be, well, we're waiting for you to, to tell us, but, hey, I, the whole reason... I'm switching from my role at the end of the year to being in the trenches doing it, to being a visitor, is that as, as we are messengers, uh, it's going to be you. It's going to be everyone on this call. It's going to be everyone who hasn't even heard about this that will make this work, not Franco Collins. I, I, think, I've, I think I've earned a, a, an opportunity to say I've done enough. Okay. Yeah? <laughs> you, <laughs> and you, I'll, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I'll be there. You know, I'll be there and I'll visit. In fact, all those people who have said I don't have time to speak to, I'll be there to go and visit and, and say hi, but it'll be up to you to do it. Well, I've been ex- extremely blessed to be able to listen to uh, on University of Ucadia, university, university.ucadia.info, some of the conversations you've had recently and how profound those have been. So I know you've been very busy uh, uh, sorting out all this knowledge and all this uh, uh, evidence that's coming in, and I just say this: we're, we're off. We're being offered something here that's unlike any time in history, that at least in this last 26,000 years, I believe, and that is, is actually to start the new cycle fresh, without that um, that deceptive counterfeit spirit of darkness having control. We have, actually have a chance to come in purely from the light and to throw that off once and for all. And I, as far as I am concerned that is the most important thing that we can do is to to grow into the light let the light from inside of us come out and shine as the jesus said in the sermon on the mount don't hide your light under a bushel but put it on a lampstand for everybody to see and that way will change the world and that's that's the passage that culminated with the golden rule in matthew 7 12 so um i really appreciate what you're doing and i appreciate uh your offering this and i i anyways i can't begin to tell you that, that I, I, I'm shaking sometimes when I think about the fact that we're at a time point in the history of mankind to actually transform mankind to what we were supposed to be and actually take that heaven that was just inside of us, as, as supposedly says there in Luke. I forgot what the reference is, but actually yeah. not just to have it inside of us, but have it out everywhere, all around us, all and, and be visible for everybody to see. Well, well good on you, and, and I appreciate when you call. I really do. And uh, it's an exciting time. And the, the, the most exciting time is when uh, we all have different opinions, we come with different experience, you know, and in spite of, of those things that otherwise might great, that we come together respectfully and are uh, greater than our parts. So good on you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. All right, Frank, how much time do we have uh, left or that you are available? Uh, well, they're not uh, drilling or bashing or smashing at the moment, but I, I need a break. So uh, let's let's try and get through a couple more questions, and then we'll have to wrap it up for tonight, if that's okay. Yes, that sounds good. All right. Uh, you had mentioned uh, that appointing someone as executor. This is a question from the chat. Who else can we appoint as an executor in a court case, or is that possible? You can appoint anyone, and you can appoint a tribunal of executors. Uh, you're appointing a general executor. It's, it's a right that you have. Now, we, we haven't explored this uh, well enough yet, and there is quite a bit of material on the role of the executor. Um, but you absolutely have the right 
to appoint another to be your executor. You absolutely have that right. And you can appoint them as a general executor and they can speak on your behalf when you go to a matter of law. And that is, as I said, the system hides the fact that that is built in as the amicus curiae, the amicus, the, the friend of the court. And it's always been there. And of course, people say, well, how do I use that? And it's always been that the amicus curiae can come before the court on your behalf, but no one's really connected the two together. The amicus curiae is when someone comes to the court appointed an executor. That's when they come. That's what that role is. All right? And still, uh, but, uh, however, still as a friend of the court, correct? Well, the, we, we say the executor, and we come and say the general executor, but I'm just using a reference when someone says, well, prove to me that a, a third party can come in and, and speak on behalf of the defendant. And just as they corrupt the ancient origin of tenancy, they corrupt the ancient processes uh, of being, you know, joining and, and turning into this role of this thing called baptism, they've corrupted the origin of the role of the amicus curiae. And really, the general executor can be anyone uh, that you wish to appoint, providing you formalise the appointment. That's all. Very good. Thank you, Frank. All right, next question from the chat. Is there a Eucadia service that copyrights the trust name? Uh, the trust number is always considered the property of Eucadia, and the reason that the trust number is always considered the property of Eucadia is that if it was not, it could be claimed not only uh, by the individual, but claimed by another society. The trust number represents Eucadian time and space. And so as Eucadia is another name for unique collective awareness uh, with purpose, with, with meaning in motion, and I, I leave that up to you to decide what Eucadia then means if it's unique collective awareness in, with meaning in motion, but uh, it is owned by that entity and that force and we are able to use it and granted use of it and granted in, a, in the case of a trust number a unique piece of time and space so it actually makes you a timekeeper the office of timekeeper when you go into the court so one of the things they play with us is that they change time they do it all the time they'll write a document and backdate it well they're, they're playing a timekeeper you are a timekeeper no fraud involved. You are a timekeeper. But if someone says, I don't like that idea and that there's something uh, silly about uh, trust numbers, I've given an explanation of what it is. That's what it is. And uh, there, is, there is no grey area about that. The, the, the time and space of Eucadia in unique collective awareness and the divine creator is not up for grabs. Very good. Thank you, Frank. All right, back to Octavia on the phone line. Yes, hi. One more quick question I have. Um, sure. My son was actually in, involved in a car accident. Um, I find it that basically the courts have just taken over, you know, everything. Um, long story short, like how could I get back control of everything? Because they really didn't give me any voice in how I wanted to do anything, what I wanted to do, or anything. Any advice yep. for that? Um, well, it's a pretty open question, isn't it? I mean, it, it comes back to: Are you are you are you getting clearer in your mind who and who and what you are based on yes. some of the things we're talking about? Yeah. Yes. And and are you becoming more familiar with how the courts operate and why they operate and the deeper levels, the three levels, if you like? Of, uh, of what they're doing, ecclesiastical, trust, and, and statute, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, then, really, the answer rests with you. It may not be now, and you may not feel ready now, but you will learn that you can appoint someone who is ready and willing to go to court as your general executor. But there's going to come a time where you will be ready, 
to be able to speak your voice and speak the truth of your voice and the divine will speak through you and you'll know exactly what to do but the the, the remedy rests with you I have to say once the knowledge is, is in you and the knowledge is understood and you, you it makes sense the remedy is with you so that's really the only way I can answer that question of how do you uh, gain control uh, it, it really comes with with the knowledge starts to emanate from you and your character changes and this exactly. is what I was saying to people before about you'll read the positive law and it'll come a point where your 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 people say to you something's changed with you your aura's changed or your vibrations changed or something's changed with you because the knowledge now is emanating in different vibration it's the same by the way of, of animals in the wild you hear of animals uh, uh, transmitting fear yeah mm -hmm. well it, it's is it ever occurred to you when those judges are looking on that bench they can smell the fear of people coming before them yeah right. mm -hmm. and what happens when someone comes to court and not only do they have no fear but what's emanating from them is justice is right. divine right do you think they would get that sense do you think probably not <laughs> Well, that's that's a good good answer, but but they'd certainly get the vibe. They may ignore it, but they that they'd certainly sense it. I assure you. Okay, and um, one other thing. So and this goes back to religious. So um, religious cults or whatever that say, oh, you have to go this way. You have to be with us. You have to do this, or you're going to perish from the earth. Like is that? How does that? Is that wrong? My spirit tells me it's wrong, but I was brought it up. It is wrong. Okay, it I is, was brought it, up. It, I was, I was brought up in a religion of Jehovah Witnesses, and right. Um, I'm I'm in a battle with them, not with myself because I'm at peace with myself because yes. I believe in God and I know um, that that religion itself is pretty much closed-minded. I don't take anything from it, but I just wanted to make a point that for those um, religious who say, you've got to do this, you have to do this. Is that right or wrong? I just wanted your insight on that. Well, um, in every lie is a grain of truth. Have you heard that before? Yes. Okay. So we just had a chat before to say that the events unfolding with uh, the foreclosure, divine foreclosure, because that's what it is. We're, we're witnessing a divine foreclosure is something that none of us can actually stop it's been started and none of us can stop but in fact all of us are witnesses yeah mm -hmm. so you've been in a faith that places a great emphasis on the role of a witness yes mm -hmm. so there is a, a, a an element of truth then in what they've said to you yeah yes but to what to discern what is truth and what is false really right. is ultimately up to you because what matters and this is one of the mysteries of the universe what matters is what you see and believe from your perspective and I I hope and trust that as you continue to learn and have confidence in yourself that you will be able to discern what is true and what is not true but right. remember in everything there is a grain of truth and I think one of the great things that and I use the word emancipation when when our spirit and our mind is emancipated from the fears that others put on us our ability to discern what is true and what is not true and when we know we can do that it's a great day because right. then n no one can tell us a, a, a lie anymore and we find ourselves confused okay thank you so much no, good on you. And Terry, that's it, I think, for me tonight. That's a, probably a good one to end on. So, Very good. Yes, thank you, Frank. Uh, well, real quick, we're going to be coming back together next week. Is that correct, Frank? Uh, and yeah. 10 o'clock next Wednesday. Also, just as a reminder, we didn't cover this earlier, but the uh, websites we've covered tonight are university.ucadia.info and also one-heaven.org. 
and you can, uh, once you enter One Heaven, you'll see a page.